Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I have the new Nook Designs August release. Like all the new Nook Designs releases, this is part of their blog hop and so you can follow the link in the description box below over to my blog where you can leave a comment and enter for your chance to win this stamp set. Today's stamp set is called Tranquil Tides. It's a um, solid image stamp set or a silhouette stamp set in the style of some other different uh, Newton's Nook sets that have been released like Falling Into Autumn. I really enjoy these sets because it's a little bit of a different look from Newton's Nook and rather than focusing on coloring like you might with a Newton set, um, you, you know, uh, Newton the Cat, sorry, you will be able to stamp it in solid inks and not do the coloring or get some different effects like today I'm going to be doing some silhouette stamping and I'll be doing some watercoloring over it using an emboss resist technique. In order to get the effect of them being silhouettes, I'm going to stamp some coral in black ink, and I will also be using the starfish and the saying salty kisses and starfish wishes. I wanted to create a grouping of coral in the bottom left hand corner of the cardstock and then I will add some starfish also to the coral grouping and a little bit out towards the sentiment eventually to tie in that sentiment. And because I want to create the effect of there being a whole large bunch of coral, I will be stamping the coral overlapping each other. However, I also don't want my VersaFine ink to dry, so if I stamp a few pieces of coral, put down the clear embossing powder over it, and then heat emboss it, I can continue to stamp. Where if I stamp the coral, put the powder down, and then try to stamp again without melting it, it's going to mess up the embossing, I'm going to get the embossing powder all over my stamp. So what you want to do is stamp a few down when you're doing the layering, stop, put the powder on, heat it up fully, and then continue to go. I was also liking going a little bit slower in this way because it helped me decide where I would definitely want to put the next piece, how much layering I wanted to do, and get, gave me an idea of how this truly looks when it's stamped out. Because the idea in my head it makes sense to have a bunch of coral, but when you're actually stamping it, you see what the effects really look like. And so here I'm kind of trying to decide how much is too much coral together and um, also how far I want to extend it up or down the page. And so you see here that I'm just generally getting it in the bottom left hand corner, but because I'm going to be holding, this is going to be a portrait card or a vertical card, I decide that I would have the coral creep up the longer side of the card a little bit more to pull in that effect. And I'm going to also add in some starfish. I knew I wanted some of the starfish sort of hidden among the coral, but then I later decide to add a few more starfish out towards the sentiment because I wasn't sure how clearly you would see that those were the starfish. And once I have a general grouping in the bottom left, I'm ready to start my watercolor. I am going to be using Distress Reinkers for a watercoloring effect because they are really vibrant. You can use Distress inks and you can um, push them out onto your craft sheet, pick them up and watercolor with them. You could use uh, watercolors, whatever ones that you have on hand. But I decided to go with the reinkers because I really like the Distress palette and I like that it will continue to react with water. So if I wanted to do some like flicking techniques on top of this, it will continue to resist the water even after it's dry because it is that distress formula. And also I just, I just love that vibrancy and I haven't been able to achieve it with any other coloring medium yet. So I'm starting here with the Mermaid Lagoon and I put the water down on the paper first because I wanted it to wick out sort of naturally. but what I found is that since I did this embossing, the ink was really just sitting inside the uh, little holes created by the embossing, or um, the because the embossing is raised up off of it. The ink isn't spreading out, but it's stopping where the black lines are. And I was hoping to get a little bit more of a uh, flowing effect. 
And I do address that eventually, but for now I'm just kind of playing with things. And before I add a new color, I always wet the paper first, even though I found it was doing that pooling thing. Having the paper wet first allows it me to move the ink around a little bit more easily. And um, I also am using a wet brush as I do this. I found that I wanted to just start spreading the color with the brush a little bit more because like I said, it wasn't quite just wicking out the way that I thought it might. And so you see there that I just pull the brush in and add some spots. I'm doing this really randomly. There's no right or wrong way to do this, of course, because I'm just really trying to create more of a messy, artistic look here. Now, I had dipped my paintbrush in my water, and so now it's stained. And so even though I'm really just trying to add water there, it the water is colored. And so if you want to be able to add clean water at each step, you might want to have a couple cups of water next to you or pause and clean out your, your water cup in between. I decided to use the Mermaid Lagoon. Then there was that cracked pistachio in the center. And now I'm using seedless preserves. I know the ocean is not purple, but I just wanted to create something that was a little bit more fun and playful and give it a slightly different effect because I've been creating a lot of ocean backgrounds over the summer and I just wanted to play with some new colors. I thought it would also be interesting to see how it mixes in with the, the other colors that I'd already chose. So I also then sprayed it with a mister bottle just to get those colors to continue to play and mix out and if there was an area where the color went that I didn't really want it to go I just dabbed it with a clean paper towel and so I could control where the water or where the color went more effectively and it will leave a slight bit of color behind when you dab it with a paper towel but it does sop up most of it and then I hit it with a heat gun and let it dry. You want to be careful though because you've already embossed that black area and if you heat it too much, you're going to remelt the embossing powder. And that makes it look a little bit funky. So just kind of keep that in mind or be patient and let it air dry. Now I want to add the sentiment and a few more starfish just to pull in that saying a little bit more. So I am stamping those in the VersaFine ink again and then clear embossing them just like I had done before with the coral. And I'll melt that. Now you see that there's this little drop of cracked pistachio up there in the corner by the sentiment and it's totally not intentional but you know I'm just going to make that work and I'm not going to let it bother me and so the way that I deal with that is just to flick on some more of the other colors and make it look like I intentionally put flicks everywhere, flicks of color everywhere even though I did not. Now I'm using a flat brush here and I'm not finding that it is flicking on the drops as, be as good as a round brush as I've used in the past. So if you're going to do some flicking techniques, I suggest the round brush instead. Also, I did find that the Mermaid Lagoon had dried back a little bit and wasn't quite as vibrant as when I first started. And so since I'm flicking on some Mermaid Lagoon anyway, I'm just going over some of the parts that I'd colored with the Mermaid Lagoon, again, to bring that vibrancy back out a little bit. And then I just spritz it one more time to get that uh, color going. So that's it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafty videos, including Newton's Nook designs, tutorials, different watercolor and distress ink tutorials, since I love to use distress ink, please subscribe to my channel. Be sure to follow the link in the description box below to the blog hop and enter for your chance to win this stamp set. Thanks for watching. Bye.